changing tracks completely. I mean, we, 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 I'm just sort of mentioning all the, the things of concern that I've been hearing, you know, actual at different uh, community events, people writing to me. The other big one, of course, is, is this whole story with Russia and, and the, the South African government's almost uh, alliance, not alliance, but certainly support of, uh, I, I don't know how one determined, but sort of the relationship with Russia that puts South Africa out of kilter with uh, with many governments and certainly Western governments and, and the concern for that and potential, you know, sanctions, you know, could could, could South Africa actually be uh, the subject of sanctions from, from the United States? Yeah. Okay, let's, you know, South Africa is supportive of Russia. That's what it is. And that puts it at odds with much of Western Europe and North America. This is the position we're in at the moment. Um, I don't think that Western liberal democracies can or should dictate South Africa's foreign policy. I think South Africa is best advised to adopt a foreign policy going similar to that to India. We spoke about India earlier on energy. India doesn't say a great deal about what's happening in, in the Ukraine. Um, India profits handsomely from trade with Russia and uses its extremely important position on the Indian Ocean Rim to extract trade and diplomatic and other advantages from the world's Western democracies. It's a it's, 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 it's a policy of national interest. I think given the complexity of the conflict, perhaps not going to get into this evening, um, the historical ties between South Africa's liberation movement government and, and Russia, and um, the, the present ties between that party and, and Russia and China, the a successful resolution here would be to see South Africa adopt a much more intelligent foreign policy. It can maintain its relations with Russia as it chooses to, but it, it cannot do so at the expense of its relationships with Western democracies. And that's what's beginning to happen, and that's the danger and, and the risk for us. Um, my experience is that there are people in the ANC, senior people, and in the government who deeply regret this. There are a number, I've, I've counted several now, delegations of ANC and government leaders who have been dispatched around North America and Western Europe to try and clarify South Africa's position. They are often incompetent in how they do so. Our ambassadors in foreign capitals are often deeply incompetent and unable to articulate South Africa's national interest. But the idea that the ANC has a cavalier approach to our relationships with Western democracies is not what my experience of the past three or four months has been. My experience is that there is a deep sympathy for Russia and its, its position vis NATO, but also a sincere desire to maintain the trade and related um, advantages it draws from Western democracies. And I think that is a, 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 a conflict of interest that a wise and, and intelligent government could pull off. A reason for that is that South Africa is strategically very important now to the Western world. There is no serious, at this time, threat of sanctions against South Africa that I'm aware of, and I'm fairly well briefed on these things. Even on the question of a GOA, which is a trade preference scheme that we have with the United States and that a, a fraction of our trade with the US moves through, there is, as, as I read it, an attempt within the US administration to renew a go. Now, why, why would Western democracies not just kick us to the curb and say, you know, bunch of deplorables, um, good luck with China and Russia? The reason is that we sit on the Indian Ocean Rim, which with um, uh, India and, and much of Africa's east coast and access to the Suez Canal makes us strategically important. We also sit on the South Atlantic, 
Now, the South Atlantic is arguably even more important and is becoming, I mean, people are starting to realize it is, some of the most important and valuable geostrategic real estate in the world. Uh, China will likely back Argentina's claim to the Falkland Islands and in exchange perhaps get some sort of naval facility that guards the Drake Strait, which is the shipping passage of South America. China may also likely get a, was advanced in acquiring a naval facility at the port of Barta in Equatorial Guinea. Uh, sailing from Barta, the Chinese Navy is closer to New York than if it had a base in Hawaii, and it guards the southern access to the South Atlantic. The third access point to the South Atlantic are the ports at Simonstown or Walfish Bay in Namibia. And if those ports fall to China or Russia, Western access to the South Atlantic is compromised. If something happens in the Suez or Panama canals that obstructs them, all global bulk shipping moves in a band between the 50th and 60th parallel south through the Drake Strait or um, around the coast of Southern Africa where ice uh, further south makes um, the, the passage rather narrow. For a second reason why Western countries are have to be careful in how they approach South Africa now is um, resources and critical minerals. The French are being forced out of West Africa by the Russians. And North Africa has lost too much of the Western world as it is. The East is being contested. China now has a very advanced naval facility, has had for some time, that guards the Suez Canal at um, off, off Djibouti, the neighbours, one of the Americans. Southern Africa is now up for grabs. If the Western world loses its regional influence in Southern Africa, it loses a great deal. One, is, one resource is critical minerals, the kinds of things that are necessary to build smart chips and cell phones and the like. Take platinum, platinum group metals, for example. If you want access to that, you can deal with Zimbabwe, you can deal with Russia, you can deal with South Africa. Those are the major resources. The Western world loses access to such mineral resources, its ability to stay competitive with China, particularly in Russia in a very much secondary way, is much reduced. And policymakers are aware of that. Africa is now home to more cities of a million people than Europe and America combined. It's urbanizing quickly and income levels are rising, meaning that in an era of anticipated global sh slowdown, Africa presents a, the world's last great untapped consumer market. If you are exited from Africa ahead of that, your firms, your manufacturing, your products cannot benefit from that. And Africa is home to over 50 votes on global fora, such as the United Nations. You don't just walk away from that because it means that you're going to lose a progressive number of majorities of votes on critical issues on the world's major, major global forum. So I think the position for the Western world and South Africa is far more finely balanced than some of the analysis that's come out of business or come out of the South African media has suggested over the past several weeks as our dalliance and flirtations with Russia has, has, has risen. And, and the upshot of that, why it's important to you, is I don't think Western capitals are going to turn their backs on South Africa and our trade relations at this point to any significant extent. They'll posture, maybe they'll, they'll to, to placate Opposition back home, they'll threaten many punishments, if you think of them that way. But if they took truly firm action against South Africa, banned in a go, for example, introduce sanctions, the effect will simply be to drive South Africa and Southern Africa deeper into the orbit of Russia and China. And strategically, from a national security perspective, that makes no sense for Western Europe or North America. So I don't think it's going to happen. And I think what will in practice happen 
is South Africa is going to have its way on its relationships with, with Russia or whoever else to a far greater extent than has been the case, the, the, the case to date. I think that will be balanced by a greater awareness on the part of South Africa of the kind of trouble that you create for yourself when you engage in activities that um, are seen as, 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 as wholly unacceptable to the sensitivities of Western liberal democracies, such as some of our military flirtations with, with Russia have been of late. And I think you'll see on the South African side a tempering down of that. And on the Western side, I think you'll see a similar attempt at, at um, finding each other again. So I don't share the view that our Russian relationship is going to, in the short term, trigger an economic crisis or catastrophe or currency catastrophe for the country. Yeah, and I, but I hear you saying, um, in terms of that, is it's not a it's not a question of the the sort of moral issue of this because I think, and I mean that 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 wasn't my question. It was really around this question of the sanctions, which is top of mind of what people are really concerned about. Because if there's sanctions, what will that do to to already you know struggling economy, etc. So, um, but I think uh, you know just talking as a religious leader, the, the 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 sort of supporting places like Russia and China and Iran which are all autocracies, they tyrannies. There's, uh, I mean, you know, I just um, a few days ago wrote a letter to to President Ramaphosa about, um, you know, the Wall Street Journal um, journalist who, who who is, you know, imprisoned at the moment and, you know, asking him to intercede on his behalf. But it's just a symbol of, of countries that uh, perpetuate human rights abuses on a daily basis. There is no chance of a fair trial. There is no freedom of the press, no freedom of association, no human rights. I mean, all the issues that actually the ANC was asking uh, the, you know, the American and, and Western Europe to sanction apartheid South Africa for the human rights abuses of apartheid, which were grievous and evil. Uh, and yet, you know, China, Russia, uh, Iran, um, are, are guilty of, of of the same kind of human rights abuses. So I think it's it's disappointing from from that point of view. But you actually what, what you're saying is from a kind of pure um, sort of real politic, they're going to get away with it. Uh, you know, however kind of morally uh, you know repugnant it may be. Yeah, I think from a that's that's my position. That from a um, you know we said we strip hope and fear and so on out of these briefings and events from a hard policy and economic perspective and aware of what that means and the living standards of, of ordinary people, I, I think that um, the ANC will ultimately have its head here on um, South Africa's foreign policy. I also think the war in Europe is coming to an end. The, the great uh, Ukrainian push uh, that's in progress is probably the final one. If it fails, which I think it will fail, Western defence chiefs will tell their politicians that there's no more that we can do. And uh, what will then happen, I expect, is that the Ukrainian and Russian forces will dig into their current positions and the intensity of the war will be greatly reduced. A stalemate of short sorts will play out over the next year. And I anticipate further that uh, the timing works quite good in early in 2025. Uh, Western governments will tell their people, we've done all we can. We've secured the bulk of Ukraine uh, from what they will describe as Russian aggression. Russia will be able to tell uh, itself and, and, and Russians that we have secured the east of Ukraine and the future for ethnic Russians from what it would describe as Ukrainian aggression. And a, a ceasefire will be negotiated. And the reason why I'm confident on, on this is, is varied. One is what you're told is going to happen um, by the people who, who will make it happen, some of them, not all of them. But um, it the, the current, the, the, the Russian Ukrainian forces are currently uh, dug in or digging in to lines that approximate quite closely those of the Minsk agreements 
of just more than a decade ago, which were an early effort to prevent this kind of conflict by not not it wasn't quite formal, but but in a sense, for the purpose of this evening, partitioning Ukraine in a manner that the that that the eastern regions had a degree of autonomy, although they would still fall under the the ultimate authority of Kiev. That will change now. They'll fall under the ultimate authority of 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 of, of Russia. But as this war ends over the next 18 months, the um, capacity for it to be used as a conflict touch point between South Africa and its Western allies will dissipate at the same rate. And um, I think I'm right on that. And if I am, we escape with less damage economically than might otherwise have been the case. Okay, great. So you're making lots of calls here tonight based on, you know, the analysis of the SRF. 